I went to a school called King Alfred's, which is a kind of progressive school, and I was very lucky because they had a proper pottery and a really nice teacher, a teacher called Jeannie Hull. And she, was, she actually ended up being a friend, and I still know her, and I've got her wheel, actually. Everything starts on the wheel, and I fire to stoneware, but I usually use a red stoneware clay called Kuiper Red, but sometimes I like to use white stoneware or porcelain. But yeah, the most of my work is made in red stoneware. The barium glazes that I use are, are matte, a, a nice matte finish which sort of emulates verdigris copper. It's got 40% barium, so it's not a functional glaze. So I use a different glaze for the insides. And basically I just make uh, vessels, well, vases and decorative vessels rather than domestic ware. I like to use quite stiff clay, but it does take its toll a bit on your hands. And you'll actually notice that once I've centred the clay, I actually now open it up with my fingers. I used to use my thumbs, but I've had some pains in my thumbs, so I've started to open up with my fingers. And once I've done that, um, when I'm bringing up the wall of the pot, I, halfway through, I tend to stand up if you get over the form, it's somehow easier to form it, to really bring the clay up. What's important is uh, getting the thickness even all the way up, because when, I'm, when I carve it, I don't want thin and thick areas in the pot. So, yeah, so when you're stretching out, when you're bellying it out, what tends to happen, if you're not careful, is that you get a, a thinner area on the shoulder of the pot. So that's what you have to be aware of when you're throwing it. And obviously you have to, you're thinking about the inside shape of the pot, which is for any pot, you're thinking about the inside shape. And then you can turn off any excess on the outside, but you can't really change the inside of the pot. Once I'm happy with the form, um, I will use a metal kidney because, well, I want a, a really smooth, even shape. And I can slightly kink the kidney to follow the form of the pot. When it's able to be turned upside down, then I turn it out upside down to dry out the base, which is obviously thicker and needs more drying. Once it's leather hard, then it can be turned. Once I've turned it, I'm able to start marking out uh, where I want to carve it. And I always do this, I always do it in segments so that it meets up at the other end. Then I put the pot on my lap and I use a bent wire tool and yes, get on with the laborious job of um, of carving it all out. As it dries, then I keep coming back to it and I can perfect it and keep on perfecting it. Once it becomes hard leather hard, then, it's, then I do a bit of burnishing as well. Once the pots are completely dry, I put them in the first firing, which is called the biscuit firing. And then for the glazing, what I've found is that it's best to glaze the inside of the pot the day before. I glaze the outside because it gives the, a chance for the, for the pot to dry out a bit and then it's still absorbent. The other thing that I do uh, is I use a hydrometer in my glazes because the thickness of the glaze is quite critical, particularly for this glaze and any little drip always shows with this glaze. Um, so it's quite a precise process. So when I glaze the outside of the pot, I dip the whole thing in and then I remove the glaze from the high points with a kidney and then with a damp finger and there's a little bit of sheen left from the residual glaze which gives a nice effect. Apart from the organic influences, I'm also drawn to metal objects such as cogs and there is quite a mechanical feeling about them as well so there's a sort of crossover between mechanical and organic. Usually one idea leads to another. So, I, so a pot comes out and there's an aspect of it that's successful. And I, I, you know, 
focus on that aspect and then, then I think well maybe I can incorporate that but with a different glaze or maybe I can incorporate that but it with a slightly different way and that so the process helps you to to continue and carry on to make the next pop.